is up. Risk takers! Welcome to the Kill Pete strategy. I am Pete. I'm a top player in Risk Global Domination. I have a daily release on YouTube. I do weekday streams on Twitch. And if you are interested in getting better at the game of Risk, I invite you to subscribe to my channels and come along the ride with me. Uh, so here's how we're going to try and turn the lemons into the lemonade. So I recorded a secret settings video, um, and I recorded with the mic unplugged. And I don't know if you guys can see in this recording, but if you look right, right there, the microphone is just a little, little loose. So we have game audio, but we don't have Pete's commentary. And I figured, okay, how do we turn this into something um, that's usable and interesting for the viewer. And what I came up with, what I concluded was, I, we're going to play this game back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about why I, I made the design choices I made with the settings. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to talk about the state of the game of risk. And I'm going to talk about everything in between. I'm also going to take questions from you guys. Um, so we can talk about why I love these settings, why I had so much fun with them. Um, and why I also think having them be, um, having them be something that I shot ahead of time and only started to publish after I finished the rank grind on them. I think we got up to, um, top 30 in the world on these settings. Um, so at this point in the game, 2303 hours played gone, 2301 and 768. So this is season 15 rank grind. This is the seventh game, I think. Seventh game, eighth game overall. Once I actually found the settings that I liked, that's who's on top of the leaderboard. Okay. And we have 42 days until the season resets. So this is 42 days before the end of season 15. <coughs> So we didn't yet know how far I was going to get in this series and I haven't published them all. So you guys don't yet know either. Um, but what we're going to end up talking about is we're going to talk about overall theory for this game. Um, and we're going to talk about in particular, uh, theory for this game. So you can see I spawn in the fourth seat, fourth seat, you're later in the turn order. You're going to want to, I should put myself in a place where I don't block the shot. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that you don't cap on too low of a number. So my available cap options, I would say at a glance, would be uh, that one stares out. It looks like Greece would be the most common. Okay, so settings, most important thing we want to talk about. Why have I made the design choices for these settings? Let's go over all of them quickly. Uh, first of all, we're playing Capital Conquest. Why are we playing Capital Conquest. Capital Conquest is the best mode to get to the very top of the leaderboard because it is noob resistant. Noobs don't understand uh, the odds of rolling on a capital very well, and they don't understand how to place them. They don't understand how to leave troops on them. They don't understand to work around. So, so the cap provides the mode with the highest inherent skill gap. Okay. Why are we using the Europe map? Well, Europe Advance has proven itself to be a premier map for rank. I would say, arguably, it is the best map in the game currently um, because of its versatility, because it is large, because it has a bunch of different viable positions that you can play. This setup is auto. We are using auto setup because we want uh, <coughs> there to be a skill gap with spawn luck, right? We don't want there to be too much spawn luck, which is why we are not using blizzards okay spawn luck matters with blizzards on this map spawn luck would matter too much uh, we are using a 60 second turn timer another way i can leverage my skill gaps right i want to be able to go as quickly as i can and play against people who if they can't keep up then they lose the game again all of this has to do with the reality that the ranking system is fundamentally unfair um and drastically and overly punitive at the top. So if you, um, if you lose, you need 90 plus percent win rates to get to the top of the leaderboard, or you just need to play a ridiculous amount, either of which are not particularly realistic in a six player free for all game, which was another criteria. Um, 
the criteria for these settings is I am trying to find something that is viable for me to play that doesn't take forever that I can make a show on. And also I can play in unfiltered six player lobbies. Okay. So, um, I don't want to play some fucking three player bullshit and call it free for all. I want to play uh, novice to grandmaster open lobbies, six player open lobbies, which is you guys must understand a bunch of very hard d design constraints, right? A lot of people at the top of leaderboard are playing expert plus they're playing four player, five player, maybe even three player, but all of those conditions I have set for myself make it very, very hard. Okay. So this is a, the AI difficulty uh, doesn't actually matter because we're using the neutral AI. The reason we're using the neutral AI is because of fixed cards. Okay. Having, these games be fixed capitals mean that if you ever have a situation where you have a balanced three player game, a balanced four player game, and one of those players bots, if we're using the automated bot, the botted out player would have advantage, which is another way the ranking system is broken. The game is broken and this needs to be fixed. Okay. Another thing. Why are we using true random dice? Because balance blitz is also broken. The algorithm that use that they use for balance blitz requires us to do this bullshit min maxing with the slider, which you never would do, and it becomes this uh, non skillful, this non strategic skillful, more <coughs> video game technical skillful clicking game, clicking sub game inside of also what you're trying to do strategically. Okay, alliances are on. Can't really see it from little Pete there. Alliances are on because. This board is going to be open and we're going to see negotiation matter a ton. So you're going to have fixed capitals with alliances and nothing fancy, no blizzard fog portals, just an open board, some spawn luck. The blizzards don't make it extreme. And all of the individual texture from every game is going to be provided by the capitals and then the decisions of the players, including who they choose to work with and who they don't. So let's see if we can predict caps. Um, that will be another interesting skill that you're going to want to figure out, particularly if, if you're later in the turn order. Uh, we see our first cap placed by blue. Blue chooses Portugal. Now, uh, this cap gets an F. This is a very, very poor quality cap. I recommend you don't do that. If you are um, in the first seat, uh, where would blue's best cap be? Probably Russia. Portugal is not a good choice. Uh, let's continue. Where do we think white would go? So if I'm white, I'm going to cap here in Vienna. Um, could make an argument for Bulgaria, but you know, Pete's probably going to cap on the three. You definitely don't want that three down there. White might be a noob. They might go Iceland. Maybe they take something in the Middle East. I call Vienna for white. Let's see if I'm right. Black offers an alliance. I accept immediately. Standard operating procedure for these settings is I'm going to accept every alliance when offered, and I'm going to offer them immediately and see who wants to talk to me. I think people who don't talk to you on these alliances a very heavy tell that they are not very good, and you should be unpredicted. Uh, you should treat them as unpredictable, dangerous, potentially shitty players. Black throws me a thumbs up. It looks like white bots in the open. Nope, white is a noob and they select Iceland. Okay, congratulations, White. You are also confirmed as garbage. So we have two absolute Fs in terms of cap choices. Those caps both fail and totally suck. If you are black, where do you go? Uh, black's options kind of suck. I don't hate Oslo for them. I don't love them. I don't hate this for them either. Um, maybe something in Italy because you're third in the turn order. Let's see which one they go with. Okay. They choose neither of those options, but I, I don't hate their option there either. So black chooses Hungary. I choose Greece. I snap choose Greece and I throw the thumbs up to black immediately because I, I'm saying I want to come down off the two line to take this on my first turn. That makes sense for me. That's the bonus I'm going to want to take. Um, Magenta chooses a hard F, capping in Netherlands. We also see orange choosing <laughs> and neighbor capping white. Now, I think white has botted, so 
Blue tells me they have to attack my territory. I throw them a thumbs up. Blue's overly um, expecting the alliances to matter. So they're going to roll a 6v2 on the bottom left. These caps are terrible, folks. I think uh, Black's cap is the best other than mine. I think my cap is by far the best. And I am also the furthest east, which is very important. I've noticed that the east on these board on this board is very significant. Okay. Question number two, does blue put troops on their capital? They do not. Blue leaves their capital. So we, we, we now have two very strong tells that blue is garbage. Blue capped in Portugal and then didn't leave troops on their capitals. And you're going to want to know who's garbage. It's very important for you to figure out who's garbage. <coughs> okay. So white puts all the troops on their Iceland cap and slams the orange cap and bitch quits. Okay. This is happens a ton on these settings the bitch quitting is next level people did not realize that they readied up to a fixed caps true random game they did not realize that you can't roll or maybe they didn't realize that uh some prick neighbor capping them isn't actually the end of the world it's pretty bad don't get me wrong orange is a fucking dick for doing that and we hope orange gets a lower placement but what white did just locked in their lowest so white gave themselves fifth and they they show and <laughs> we see another cap it turn one turn two we see a cap it turn three we see a cap it both fail that orange cap is defending super strong neutral makes blizzards not really not really but sort of i i know what you're saying uh so orange orange is bullshit neighbor capping of white goes un punished we finally get to my turn now i'm in a really strong position i i think about um popping the black cap but we don't because i i get a lot more out of having a good neighbor and holding a plus four than i do out of taking a cap which is only a plus two oh yeah the bitch quitting is next level the bitch quitting is next level in this game, and we really need to do something about the culture and the design. All right, Magenta, I'm showing the line of Magenta being able to go up to take the white cap. Black throws me a thumbs down. Why? That makes me wonder. I throw him a heart. Now, if your ally throws you a negative message for taking a bonus that your cap is in, that tells you that they're not very smart. So that's also a good thing to know. Right? I very rarely uh, throw the thumbs down. Why didn't I take the white cap turn one? Um, yeah, so so having a cap up here that's in the mix that orange is going to slam is worth, I think, a lot less less to me than having this be a plus four. So now I'm going to be generating one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, minimum, eight, nine, minimum. Right? With that cap, I only get seven. And I'm in two places. Also, I'd be in noob corner, which I don't really want. And orange goes last in the turn order, so they get the biggest uh, open. You see, they do take the cap. So now orange has two capitals and Iceland, which is worth nine troops a turn as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine minimum for the rest of the game. Riedel says it's because Pete can expand heavily in the east. Correct. How are you doing, Riedel? You doing, Andre? So, Pete, let's talk about risk. Yes, sir. Let's talk. How are you doing today? Okay, so turn two, blue finishes Spain and Portugal. I'm going to say they don't break. But let's see again if they put troops on their capitals. They do not. They guard in two positions with no troops on their capital. And now I'm saying if I am Magenta, I don't abide that. And I go break, break. And I take the Portugal cap and also knock blue out of the game, probably with that one move. Black takes... Uh, Dinark Alps here. All right. And I'm surely thinking now about taking that four cap. I'm surely thinking about taking that. And I surely take that four cap. Indeed, I do. All right. Sorry, Black. Now it, now his thumbs down is deserved. All right. I get a cap. Oh, and he breaks. And he breaks the alliance. All right. Here we go. Here we go. So. Having two caps in the same position now i might face a break from black here but that pretty much takes them out of the game so now we're in a four player game me magenta orange and blue right and let's see how long black can hang on before they're dead they have no bonus they have no capitals it's arguable that, that was too early 
to go for that break or to go for that st- break and steal, right? It is a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. It, it, I cost black six troops with that move. I also didn't get the best roll in history, but I also didn't get the worst. Like, you can lose on those cap hits, right? It's true random. You can go really, really negative uh, if you're not careful. So you do have to mitigate your risk. You have to calculate your risk. It looks like Magenta stays good with blue, but they also uh, lock them in in Gascony. And I'm saying Magenta's in a shitty spot long term because of they, they're going to be pincered in with Orange taking Noob Corner and Blue taking Spain and Portugal. France is never a bonus I like to count on, even uh, in the regular meta settings, because it is just kind of too much of a crossroads, right? The person holding um, the blue position can have a one-point guard instead of a two-point, so they're always natu naturally incentivized to break Gascony. If uh, you guys are not going to say nice things, then you're not going to be able to talk. Um, so let's let's moderate our uh, <laughs> our expectation of saying mean things in the chat. Thank you, guys. Um, I will not be tolerating that a second time. Did black quit? Here's where we here's where we talk about a very consistent thing I've noticed about these settings that I don't like. So there's a very large subset of people who take a haymaker and don't retaliate, right? They just close the app. So then you end up with a bunch of your opponent's territories that don't punch you back. Like I should face some retaliation from this. Yeah, so my opinion is if you are going to take a haymaker like Black did, there is no upside to quitting in the way he quit because all you do is you teach the guy who broke you that he can get away with it. Um, now, in this case, I was expecting some retaliation. The fact that I don't face any makes me ridiculously strong on the third turn. So now you see I have a massive massive second plus four that's guarded by three stacks guarding with threes and twos in true random is very important because you have the ability to roll the second dice um and you get really good defense right um the way risk odds works is the max dice in attacker can roll there there's sets of three versus two dice max so if an attacker is rolling a 10 v4 it's rolls of three against two defender wins in a tie highest pairs right so the most attacker can lose per roll is two the most a defender can lose per roll is two um and there's a lot of splits as well attackers do still have a slight attackers advantage um with natural odds but it's less extreme than with balance splits because um as we all know we like to take 100 percent odds rolls when we can and we know what those are um so with true random People don't manage their probability as effectively, and that is another skill gap you can leverage. I'm going to, uh, I will be right back. Okay, so we're now on the fourth turn. Black does have Spain and Portugal. They're also going to take a plus three here, which I'm fine with as long as they're cool with me. Black has allied me up, so I'm not terribly worried about them hitting my six. Sorry, this is blue, not black. 
What's the minimum you should keep on a cap before the first player setting? This is fixed. So the sets don't actually matter in the way that you think they do. Um, the minimum you should keep on a cap is relative to the amount that someone... You don't want someone having a, a 2x or, or plus roll on your cap. So, like, 15 can take a nine, but it would pretty much take all of his cap troops to do it, stuff like that. So you don't want a stack that has access to you. Okay, so blue didn't, or black rather, didn't quit. They're back, and they've taken a bonus. So you see how I immediately uh, and aggressively beat the shit out of them. Because you can't, you can't not play and then play again, especially after I stole your capital. I immediately and aggressively beat the shit out. I was like, I know, thank you. I do not want Black coming back. I do not want Black thinking he can come back. <laughs> I stole that man's capital. The longer he lives in this game, the worse it is for me. So I want to make sure Black dies. I want to make sure Black dies as efficiently as possible. Uh, thank you, Wydock the Great. Thank you for the tier one sub, man. And magenta breaks me or no? I'm worried about the exterior magenta positions because I want to control the east, right? I want to go around this outside now. And the more magenta takes to the east of me, the more I have to trust them and the longer they have to continue to exist over there. <coughs> you are so awesome. Thanks, man. When was this game played? It was played about two months ago. All right. White or rem er, uh, magenta removes white. They get the cards. It's fixed. It doesn't really matter. Black is laughing, and I obviously mute them because they are dead, and we don't need to care about the opinions of a dead person. I also find the, uh, the emoting a bit distracting. So oftentimes I don't want to mute the emotes because I want to know what they have to say. Orange breaks up the top line. I don't really blame them for that. That was their region, and I didn't want to be up there. The only reason I was up there in the first place was to beat the shit out of Black. Orange also hasn't allied me up, as as you know, which I think is a tell for a shittier player. So I'm expecting that Magenta and Blue are better than Orange based on the fact that they have not used the alliance function. Blue holds the plus three, uh, guards against my six a little bit, and now I'm saying Blue is now going to... They've they've sort of pincered off their area. Now they should be taking North Africa, but instead they put troops in Russia, which I don't understand. And we'll see where they go. Okay, but they're hitting Orange, which I do like. Hitting Orange 4. <sighs> Black's still desperately trying to hang on to life, and I'm going to target the crap out of them, obviously. They don't retaliate properly. They don't try and break my shit. Ah, they try and skip. So I'm just going to continue to focus Black until they are out of the game. Yeah, so I'm going to take Italy. Yep. And this, this is all very logical, right? Black's major turn to reciprocate on me uh, should have been the turn immediately after I stole his capital. And now I'm holding a lot of board and I have the excuse of only hitting one player so I don't really offend any of my opponents. Now what I do is I offend them in the sense that they see me getting stronger and stronger. So balance really matters here. This is much like fixed world dom on classic. The balance of the board here is a very, very important concept. Now, Magenta has more troops than me. Blue has more troops than me. So they shouldn't be inherently all that afraid, but you also have to check the generation, right? Magenta's only getting plus four, I'm getting plus eight, and I have a second capital. So if I'm Magenta, I don't want to lose that lead on Pete, and I want to be checking those numbers and making sure that I don't lose that lead on Pete. Quarantine says here, Pete, I got to ask, what makes you prefer fog off alliances for prog caps? These are fixed caps. These are fixed caps. And it's not about prefer or not prefer. My uh, my criteria for designing these settings, as we spoke about earlier, is I want to have something that I can um, grind without taking, you know, massively long amounts of times, like classic caps, um, but also in open six-player lobbies, right? No filtering of ranks. So I'm not doing expert plus, not even doing beginner plus, and I'm doing six-player open lobby. It's very hard to figure out settings that work in that context. Wow. 
Hi, Allison says, my son loves you a lot. His name is Toprak. Could you please tell him hello? Hello, Toprak. <laughs> I love you too, man. <laughs> Welcome into the stream, bud. Hope you're having a great day. In that case, what makes you enjoy fixed caps even on maps as well made as Europe Advanced? I can't stand it. Okay, so I, I went over the settings here um, to kind of explain the why. Um, so the the question of what makes me enjoy it, I enjoy the... I enjoy measuring different skills and building different skills in risk, okay? I've accomplished just about everything I possibly can Thankfully, blue assists me in the black hill. We lose black. I no longer have to worry about it. I've accomplished basically everything I possibly can in risk. You know, I don't want to go over the list um, because I'm sure folks who know are probably a little sick of it, but suffice to say, um, there really isn't any mountain yet for me to climb. So given that, um, I have to find the fun in different places. And because I'm trying to come up with interesting, creative ideas for two shows, a week, I want to find settings that I find stimulating to grind. So these settings are the most diplomatic risk settings I've ever found, I've ever created. Um, these settings challenge your diplomatic skill a lot more than your technical skill. They're not only about counting. They're not only about executing. They're very much about um, who are you working with and why? And what are they thinking? Trying to figure out what they want. I'm right now. I'm I'm making a play to blue. I'm saying I'm taking this. I'm taking Orient, but I'm not breaking you. And I could, and then I'll throw Magenta Heart as well. Blue says attack me if you need to. Blue says I'm cool with you, Pete. So I don't point to stack at him. And I also remove him from Russia, which, if I was blue, I would have seen that as aggressive, because now blue's options are. They can take cards here. They can take cards here. And once they're done taking cards here, they can only hit me or Magenta. So I I say to Magenta to attack me. I'm trying to tell Magenta to take this because I would like Magenta to have A, the bonus they've capped in, or B, the plus eight, so that then I can get away with taking Russia, which is a plus seven. And then I have the entire east of the board and I flanked the other three players. Now, the problem is there aren't actually three players in this game. There really are only two. And then Orange is being a fucking weirdo in Iceland, not attacking, waiting for us to hit each other. Uh, I will say this is the only game where I ever saw anyone do this, right? Just hold two caps down in Iceland and never really impact the board again. Um, it's a weird play style. It's playing for second. I don't like it. I don't respect it. And spoiler alert, I am not going to treat Orange very well this game for that fucking bullshit. So. Do we even see Orange take a second bonus, right? <coughs> He's just going to take a card on me and pull back to cap. He's very strong. I will say that. But letting me generate what I'm generating, I'm I'm holding on this board's 35, so I'm getting 11 troops natch, uh, plus 6 is 17, plus 4 is 21, plus 4 is 25, plus the 4 for the caps. 29. 29 generative is very, very strong. Right? And you now see I am tied up to blue and magenta and orange is starting to fall by the wayside because they're not actually playing. Magenta is upset about this. I would not be remotely surprised that blue takes exactly what I thought they were gonna. So now blue is gonna be generating one, two, three, four, plus six is 10, 13, 14, 15. So blue's generating about half of what I'm generating based on their board position, and now they can only hit me or Magenta. So, I greed out. <coughs> Blue says attack my territory if you need to. I don't understand why Blue's being so favorable to the Peatman, but uh, I'm happy to allow them to. Maybe they feel like I'm bullying them, even though we're kind of equal still. 
And I also completely surround uh, Magenta's plus eight without breaking it, which disincentivizes them from breaking me. So it's it's quid pro quo, but it's always quid pro quo in my favor. Um, and I like that. So Magenta puts a big stack blocking blue and removes the blue exterior in the hope that this breaks the deal that blue and I have and forces blue into me. Let's see what blue does about that, right? Blue only has options for cards in three and four positions. One of them is a capital, okay? So one of them is a 29 stack on magenta. One of them is a seven on me. One of them is on my capital and one of them is open. And orange chooses this opportunity to break my Russia. Right. So if I'm smart, I want to be cool with blue, but I don't necessarily know how to do that. We also have to wait and see if blue breaks. 22 for blue's open. Really good. I should be telling blue that it's okay for him to hit me. I should let blue know that I'm fine with a break. I'm fine if he wants a card. Because otherwise he kind of has no choice. Also, it's fixed. So you don't actually really have to take a card. He is getting 22. So. Missing me off might not be the move, but he wants a card. and Fair enough. And I'm going to throw him a thumbs up and say, that's a reasonable break. And I understand. That's a reasonable break, Blue, and I completely understand, and I love you, and there's no hard feelings. I still get 27, and I choose this opportunity to remove Magenta, because Magenta putting a stack here forced Blue into me. So this is a rock, paper, scissors play. Magenta pressures me here, Blue pressures me here, I pressure them there. Now what are they going to do? Now you don't get eight fucking troops. Right now I show loyalty to blue and I say attack magenta. Let's team on magenta, right? Because if I have all of this and they have all of this and we go like that, then this guy's fucked, right? Blue's like, I'm down with that. What do you do if you're magenta? Now magenta's kind of like, oh shit. And you should put some troops on his capital. He's going to try to break me a little bit. That's okay. I'm holding an awful, awful lot of board, folks. This is the other thing, too, about the East that I like, is that even when broken, I'm still going to get, what, 38? I'm going to get uh, 12, 13 troops from my Natch without holding a single bonus? <laughs> You're so damn good at the game. Ah, oh, let's not go that far. Don't, uh, don't stroke my ego, sir. I stroke it enough myself. I'm just kidding. Um... What the fuck are the secret settings? I, I spoke about it at the beginning, Tyler. I'm, we're make, I designed settings last season that I could play and grind to, you know, ideally the top of the leaderboard without having to, them be, you know, ridiculously long games uh, or stalemate-y um, such that I could still publish them. Also, they had to be open lobbies and they had to be six-player open lobbies, which is reasonably hard <laughs> when you think about it. How are the cap rolls in TR, both big and small? They're better. They're still not great, but I, I think we do see a large enough sample size of big cap rolls here, and they do follow a much more standard probability, right? They're not just totally broken. So I, I am highlighting the, the nine here. I'm worried that my cap is soft and blue goes bad. Pete is worried. Pete is like, if blue goes bad, I needed blue, right? I need the homie in blue. If blue goes bad to me, this is where I lose the game, right? So I've had a good relationship with blue so far. And he breaks it, but he loses. This is, we were talking about the cap rolls, but he loses a ton. Okay. So we've, we've now seen orange go bad on me. Blue go bad on me. Magenta go bad on me. And as I say, my natch is still really high. Because I have um, thir over 30 territory. So without a bonus, I'm still going to get 10 troops plus my one cap, right? He doesn't reinforce the two. So blue isn't very good. So I'm just going to retake my cap that I lost, but I'm not going to do much else, I don't think, because I'm not trying to scare anybody. I probably break his bonus. Yeah, I probably break his bonuses because don't steal my fucking shit and expect to hold anything. Right. That's the message you send. It's like, fuck you then. Right? Whoops, now we're both dumb. 
You want to go back to working with me? Right? So now I have two strong caps in the middle and he broke me and I bro break him. And now what? Right? So now we kind of, the board, now I try and throw him the alliance again. I say, can, can, can bygones be bygones? I still need to work with someone. And I'd much rather work with Blue. He's like, the very dumb move. I agree, right? But that's my attempt to get out of it, right? So I lose the cap. He gets bad dice. I break the alliance. I break the shit out of him. I re-offer the alliance. And I bet you, maybe he doesn't accept right away, but I bet you he accepts it again because Blue doesn't want to lose either. You often play... Um, to the expectation that your opponents are playing to win. And that's when I really get burned, right? I get burned the most on these settings um, when I encounter someone who is no longer playing to win. That's when it all gets fucked up. Tyler says, it's bad when TR is more consistent than BB. Hey, man, maybe me publishing games where I am consistently going through all sorts of design choices just to try and mitigate the fact that the game is broken will help the devs figure out the way in which the game is broken such that they actually can fix it or hire a design consultant who could maybe help them with their problem, right? And help bring the game to a much greater level of success, right? All you need is someone who knows what they're talking about in every possible way, you know, like being a tournament organizer of the largest tournament in history or being a multiple tournament champion or having the largest audience in the game on YouTube or using their bullshit ranking system or whatever you want to fucking say there is, I don't know what possible criteria I am missing to be more qualified for the job. <laughs> Perhaps I just need to put it on a resume and send it out there. Yeah. Blue's going to retake his shit. If I'm blue, I ally me again. I go, okay, we broke. You're getting too scary, Pete. And I, I don't mind being checked. Are pink and blue, blue teaming? No, I think they are. Pink, I think pink and blue are opportunistically using the alliances, right? They're they're you they're playing the game. They don't want me to just win. I was so big, right? I wasn't expecting to just get big and snowball. So it does. These aren't snowball settings per se, right? The board checks you if you get too big too quickly. You have to be careful. You have to grow in a predictable way. You have to target people predictably. You have to pick them off one by one. As soon as you get into a situation, if you're 2v1, as long as you're not, I mean, unless you're massive, uh, what's going on here? Evil Twin Reveal? I'm doing a game analysis of a game that I shot uh, with no uh, mic. My mic was unplugged. So rather than lose the the game, which I thought was a great game, um, I'm, I'm taking the opportunity to get into a bit more granular detail um, with the viewers about these settings and, and why I love them. I, I remember playing these settings and I remember walking downstairs and being like, I just had such a great game. It was so satisfying. Um, you know, there was a lot of play to it, but in the end I won and I won because I outskilled my opponents, right? I didn't win because I got lucky. I won because I did something creative or interesting and it's going to be a great show. And I really hope people love them as much as me. Um, and so far the, the, they have been well received other than the fact that it's true random. And I totally get why people don't like true random, right? Trying to get rid of the dice luck and risk is, uh, something that obviously competitively minded people would prefer, but, um, as far as these games being diplomatic, I would say that I actually shine in risk, in diplomatic skill, right? I'm not one of the most technically gifted people as far as my coordination goes, my ability to click, as far as my ability to process numbers quickly. Um, I wouldn't say I'm anywhere close to the top of top players amongst uh, any of those skills, but I think where I do shine is I shine in my diplomatic skill. I'm really good with people, and I'm really good with empathy and prediction. So Orange is now trying to make a move that says, I am your enemy, Pete. I'm going to remain your enemy. I'm going to break everything you have. So obviously I have only one response. So that is I'm going to flank that whole line. I'm going to break all of that. And I'm going to sit here such that they do not get out of their hole again. And that's actually a very easy thing for me to do, right? And once Orange is locked in their pocket, we never reopen Iceland so that they can only fortify out and then they get smacked or something. Um, Bun says, I bet the noisy twin was super annoying for the mute twin. Oh, yes, twins. <laughs> that's all, that's the response I get is another twins joke. Well done, Bunsy. <laughs> yeah, blue just chipping at me, which is fine. Blue and I are cool again. And as I said, I need blue to be cool 
in order to enable my victory, and I'm going to beat the shit out of Orange right here. You would too, folks. You would too. I'm also going to throw Magenta Heart here, probably, right? No, we let Magenta hold a plus five. We're cool. So, Orange... Now, on this three point, this is this is a very classic position for these settings, okay? So what we see is we see a, a trust hold in the Orient side. We probably see one or two caps in the mid board, but we also see the Finland Karelia one point, right? You can guard interior, you can guard exterior. Guarding exterior says to whomever has been breaking you on the top line that I'm no longer going to let you hold Scandinavia and this stack never moves. The stack stays there now forever and maybe it creeps out, but it guards the top line to the east. And I like that. Leona says, Pete Diplomacy 101, give me the whole board or break your shit. Well, the breaking of the shit though is the key part. Who am I breaking and when? I am trying to win these games. I'm playing these games to win. They are fixed, so I do like an advantageous position. But over the course of the series, you will see a lot of circumstances where I also play. There's a lot of comebacks, right? I play from a disadvantageous position, and, and I can teach you guys how to do that too. So it's not just about letting me hold. It's about figuring out who's going to let me hold such that I let them hold, and then we go first and second, right? That's the real trick. Who's going to be your homie? Now, I got a break from blue. I got a break, but they re-accepted the ally. So now I hope there's some respect that has been earned, right? Blue saw that if they bloody my nose, I can bloody them. And then we don't go first and second. So my hope is that blue understands that chipping at me slowly in Orient and letting me be big is advantageous for them as well. And then we'll outgrow magenta and orange. We see orange is already the weakest player. They're going to stay the weakest player. Uh... <coughs> Right, long term, me being good with blue is the best possible position. And then we're going to see uh, the other thing too is where we can sit in Prussia, right? So that's another position helps you just gum up the map. If you have something like this, one, two, three, sort of board position, and you're holding the east, that's how you kind of kind of brick it up such that it becomes very unprofitable for any one person to attempt to break on you after a while. Imagine how vulgar Pete had to be to lose the audio. No, imagine the vulgarity after realizing my mic wasn't plugged in, right? That's the thing. The audio is fine because you can still hear the game sounds, right? It's the fact that my mic wasn't plugged in. I was so pissed off because it was like, I've enjoyed this game so far. I don't know. I hope you have too, folks. But <clears throat> I'm really enjoying how um, this board position is super interesting because I guard with a threat on magenta. I guard with a threat on blue now, and I guard with an actual brick on orange so orange trying to attack me on the top line can't um magenta try to attack me here gets reciprocated off a cap blue tries to attack me here here gets reciprocated off a cap and that is exactly um the the way i like to position <clears throat> using the caps so that they can get bigger and bigger i can keep a lot of my troops on cap we also know we don't want to keep too many off cap troops right because uh, troops on cap defend with three dice. That's why the caps are advantageous. If you guys don't know, if you're new to Capital Conquest, capitals do three things. Capitals, you place them on turn one. They are the win condition for the mode, controlling all the capitals. You see currently two players have two. Orange has two. I have two. Now Orange is going around specifically to try and break me. Um, blue has one. Magenta has one. It says right here how many the leader has. If you control all the capitals, you win the game. Uh, capitals also give you two additional troops per turn. So if I had, if I have two capitals, I, I would, the least amount I could get is three plus two plus two. I could get seven minimum for the rest of the game. Um, and the final thing they do is they defend with three dice instead of two, assuming you have at least three troops on them. Do you have any strategies for slower players? Yes. Play longer turn timers. If you are a slower player, either because you're slow for whatever reason or because you're playing on mobile, play 90 or 120 second turn timers and, and do it unapologetically. There is no reason for you to lose games unfairly to a bullshit speed gap that shouldn't exist between platforms. That's unfair to you. Play longer turn timers. 
I love how you still have the dead black player muted. <laughs> I never unmute, I guess. Maybe he's still here. Maybe he's sending angry messages from beyond the grave. <laughs> All right, I'm going to trade with blue in the in orient here. And I, that probably goes to mid cap, right? That goes to mid cap. Yeah. So now I have a 57 and a 60. So those two caps point out in both directions and but they're only threats, right? They get reciprocated. Now, orange has broke magenta, so magenta will be weakened along with orange. And if I was to look at this board, I would say I win, blue gets second, and orange and magenta get third and, or sorry, magenta and orange get third and fourth, respectively. That's how I would call this game from this position. How you doing, Lena? Uh, where, where is this game from? We're doing, a, we're doing a game review because I recorded this game with no uh, voice audio. My mic was not properly plugged in, so I'm trying to turn the lemons into the lemonade and make it um, make it a show I can publish and say, you know, you, the viewers can get some good value out of it. So we're doing a review of the settings entirely. If you guys just, just tuned in, we're doing a review of these settings. And I've shot like 60 games on them. A ton of them are very dynamic. I really like them. I really like the skills that they show. Um, I really like the type of teamwork you see in these players um damn i guess i have to watch you for 500 hours so i can hear you sing <laughs> no no no. someone will redeem the karaoke don't you worry about that my friend someone always redeems the karaoke um i would like to maybe open up the floor to uh questions now guys do you have anything you're wondering about these settings that i haven't yet touched on Should be doing my thesis. Double Peatman. That's me. Okay, 37 a turn. Look at this. Look at this. All right, Miser Family. With blue and orange being garbage players, once pink gets whittled down, you win. Yeah, I think so. I don't even know that. Uh, is this balance what's wrong? It is none of that, Lena. This, these are true random fixed capitals is what I, what I played for season 15. And I loved them i loved these games i thought they were so she's like nice to random fix thank you i love them i thought they were so dynamic i thought they were really interesting games we now see a noose being tightened around orange orange can't get a card right so orange is card blocked so you're going to sit on their plus nine of iceland two cap iceland unless magenta gives them a card ah <sighs> You think fixed capital is more interesting than Prague on this map? Hey, man, it it, it really depends on uh, the all of the settings in concert, in my opinion. But this combination that I came up with um, is the one that I liked enough to play sixty times back to back to back and get to over forty k skill points. So I know I never would have called myself um, a fixed caps person, but uh, the quill feed strategy. <laughs> the quill tragedy <laughs> i kind of miss fog and blizzards they're really fun <coughs> you got nothing to worry about i'm not done with fog and blizzards i love your advanced progressive capitals right i love them i'm gonna keep playing them um this is its own thing right the fact that it's europe advanced capitals is only part of the equation i love the risk meta settings i'm down to keep iterating the risk meta settings you guys have nothing to worry about you're going to keep seeing a lot of um fog blizzard progressive capitals no worries there um this is its own thing this is a different thing these are more i don't know what to keep call i can't keep calling them uh secret settings i have yet to come up with a, a kind of a hook though a nice name because like how do you describe the i would say they are the most diplomatic risk settings so risk diplomacy or but i i, I don't have a hook yet um would you imp improve Europe Advanced anywhere? Is it perfect? I wouldn't say it's perfect, but I would say that um, this should be the default for the current map design philosophy. Continue to make more maps like this one. Try to emulate this one as an exemplar of what they should be doing, right? And improve upon it that way. Don't make this one better, but make more like it. That would be better. Um, Speedster says, why does 70%, did I miss? I missed your question. Why can't I scroll? I want to hear what Speedster had to say. Uh, why does 70% feel like fight and flight? <laughs> I 
I don't know. Why does it? Oh, you guys asked me too many questions. Okay, the Spartan. Hey, Pete, how would you deal with a player who has been cool with you and the last 30 minutes starts taking your bonus one by one until he's as strong as you? He wouldn't. I wouldn't let him take more than one, right? A steal is okay if it's a reasonable steal. As soon as the line of reasonable for me gets crossed, then I, then I aggressively show you why you don't fuck with me, and that usually scares people from going further. That's how I usually deal with it. What's up, Rico? Any reason to slow roll on these settings? Yes. I've heard you say it doesn't change the odds, but strategically, does it ever play a role for me? The only reason I'm not slow rolling more in the opens is I don't want to train other people in the game to do that because then it's going to take even longer to play these games. It is correct for you to mitigate risk by slow rolling and true random. The reason I'm doing it is a time and efficiency reason, not a game reason. Um, who is Post Malone? Is he some sort of rapper? You got to give me something I know, Lewis. I can't do that one. Uh, Jocko says, do matches on these settings take less time as long or longer than the meta? They take longer than snowballs, but less long than meta stalemates. So uh, I would say the average game length on these settings is about an hour. They are consistently around an hour. I don't think I had one go more than two. And even that, that happened seldom. Okay, so we do see some 20 minute games, a lot of 40 minute games, a lot of one hour long games, and then every once in a while, something a bit more than an hour. Um, the Pez noob strategy. I love this. You should add more Pete's. You want a third Pete? We could probably figure that one out. Um, Ali Corvette. Hello. What do you think about your advanced fixed capitals? What do I think about it? I don't know. We've uh, we've been currently sitting through <laughs> 51 minutes of my thoughts and we're almost there. <coughs> So, um, it looks like Magenta is forcing Orange to attack them. Right. Well, Magenta is has pinned in Orange for me, which I appreciate. They've decided that they would like Orange to get last, and I appreciate that because that's also what I would have decided. Um, Hopon says a third Pete to disagree with everything Pete too says. No, we need a we need alignment of the Pete's, ladies and gentlemen. We need alignment. I must refill my cup, so you'll have to listen to original Pete mouth his displeasure, the situation. Now nah, he looks like he's having a good time. Original Pete is happy because original Pete is winning this game. I am so glad to see that Orange gets exactly what he deserves for playing like that, right? St just cap stacking on two caps in Iceland. Like, it really makes me happy to see Orange ending up locked in his shitty pocket, right? Like, <laughs> Jack Mills says, it's fun to think about how Blackshirt Pete is the old Pete because he's... Not the new one, but Talking Pete is the old, oh, the old Pete man. Since it's present day and I'm slightly older, yes, but only slightly. Uh, CPA sniper, I need killed reaction video to a reaction video, and then possibly you react to his video to the point of ridiculousness of reaction videos. Yes, Mute Pete is so much larger than Talking Pete. Why does he not simply eat Talking Pete to learn how to talk? <laughs> An idea from. <laughs> See, only c -Vex things. The idea from the twisted mind of c -Vex. <laughs> This is the temporal paradox, folks. Yes. Temporal paradox, Pete. So now I'm giving both these guys a card, I think. I'm trading with both of my allies to try and get Orange to stay card blocked. That's fine. So, curious to see how much longer... This semi-stalemate continues now. 
So I have 350 troops to uh, second place is 276 for blue. So I'm I'm holding a massive lead now. Oh shit! While well, while well, original Pete was gone, um, <laughs> fuck that guy for not plugging in his mic. Am I right? Holy shit! All you gotta do, bro. I was so cheesed. I was so cheesed when I ended the recording. I realized there was no fucking voice audio. Fuck that, Pete. There I said it. Oh shit. Um so. So this is the way the game stalemates. You you get into this sort of stable state where nobody really aggressively hits each other. Um, but I always kind of put myself so so Leona's kind of tongue-in-cheek comment about me being greedy or aggressive. Um I don't like to have a board state that is stable if I'm not an advantage. And if I'm in a board state that's stable at advantage, then I allow the generation to just, then I allow status quo to exist for as long as it takes before I am so much larger than whomever is going to try and address me to just, it's easier for them to just kill someone um, for third, take second themselves than it is to try and fight me, which is... How I end up winning a lot of these games. Uh, do you always triple check the mic plug now? No, no. I just never, I never unplugged it. It was just a one weird individual accident. So now I'm holding the block on, um, I'm holding the block on orange because I guess magenta backed off. Magenta's getting 21 a turn. Orange is getting nine, right? Leona says, of course, you should play for advantage and then press the advantage. That's right. But only to the point where you think it's reasonable, right? Only to the point where your opponents will allow you to do it. There is such a thing as too greedy, and I, I think you and I definitely agree uh, that 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 is a thing. But perhaps we don't exactly agree on where that line is, where the degree is. Yeah, it's just that's where the play aspect comes up, comes in and the skill exactly. Okay, so Magenta breaks me here. So Magenta says, I am sick of the pseudo stalemate and I'm going to stop trying to give Orange fourth and I'm going to try and break someone who is twice my size. So you see how fucking dialed in Pete is now? Old Pete's like, I got to fucking kill this guy. So how do we get out of this one, folks? Right? Watch. Watch how we get out of this one. Because I feel like this is the stuff that's interesting, right? Getting big and staying big is less interesting than how do you properly address someone when they break you, right? Because you don't want to just go suicidal and throw. You also want to win the game. Hype up old Pete. Hype, hype, hype. Old Pete is thinking. Old Pete is calculating. You see the look? Look at the intense look. Think I'm going to kill that man. He had the audacity to break the Peatsman. Look of fire. How often would you win against yourself from a year ago on these settings? 50-50. Um, I wouldn't say my skill in the game has appreciated in the last year in any way that would benefit on these. Well, slidering, but these settings don't slider. So like, there's very little skills that I lack currently. Uh, sorry, that I have currently that I would have lacked a year ago. So you see how I'm... Now I'm just going to brick this up. And I'm going to say, if you break me, you open a hundred cap. Do you guys like this? Let's look at this. You see me shaking my head? I say, no, 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 no. So look at this. 10, 33, 16, open three. 27. So the reason I have one soft front is that gets blocked, that gets blocked, that gets blocked, that gets blocked. But this is, I want you to get in this way. I want you to open both caps. I want you to prove to me that you're my enemy by opening both of my caps so I can use those capital troops to beat the shit out of you. I am Lurium in exactly. Yes. How long do these games last on average? About an hour. About an hour, I would say. See, now Magenta does not have the chance, right? I don't go good to Magenta again, right? They, they, they were in a solid third 
Now they give themselves potentially fourth. He doesn't even open orange to me. Right? This was a mistake. If I'm magenta, I definitely hit that opening the orange 70. So maybe the orange can help killing Pete. So the error here that magenta made not opening orange to me could be fatal. We got a height song or a sub. Thanks, bro. <laughs> I'm seeing two Pete's. Oh, loud, loud and loud. Get me off these drugs. And my twins. Yes, we are twins. <laughs> hey, it's fine. What's up, guys? Thank you, Heitzung, man. Thank you so much. How was, uh, I heard news. I heard that the big Heitzung got to meet the little JJ. Is this true? All right. Now Orange goes into Magenta because he opened them. <laughs> that was such a miss by Magenta. And Orange continues to go poppy, poppy time. That was Orange's big move for the last 20 minutes of the game. To, to fucking break his neighbor. <laughs> I guess the reason, uh, too, is there wasn't much point in opening the 77 because where's it going to go, right? It's going to go this far, then it can't really go through. There isn't enough material to really get in on me. I'm now at a, ma I'm now more than double uh, yellow, or I'm now more than double magenta, but um, blue is still very impactful to the outcome of this game, so I need to keep blue sweet. Since I'm about to stream from the little JJ account, oh, maybe from an unspecified location in South Germany. Dude, I will raid you guys for sure. That'll be awesome. The Quill Feet Strategy. The, the Quill Feet Tragedy. Thank you for the prime, man. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> when are we getting the FFA round one game? Absolutely never. That game never sees the light of day. That would give the sniper exactly what he wanted. Why do we have to talk about risk again? We don't have to. You can do other things. We could talk about The Bachelor. We talk about RuPaul's Drag Race. I don't know what shitty shows you watch. What, what shitty shows do you watch? What shitty shows do girls watch? Anyways, um, I'm so judgy. Science, biatch! I like how both Pete's howling laugh when Orange broke. Yeah, both of us enjoyed that. <laughs> we like the same things. We're the same guy. I'd rather talk about grad ways. Just, I, see, I called it. I knew it. Did I know it? How did you confirm it was sniping? <laughs> you watched the game. <laughs> Anyone who doesn't fucking see exactly what that was doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. <laughs> All right. We got to be getting closer to the end here. Even drink and sink. That's funny. <laughs> Cheers to you, Pete of the past. Thank you for being so good at risk. Sniping strikes. Ah, I'll be fine. I don't need. I didn't need to win that tournament anyway. <laughs> Okay, Magenta moves all of the troops off capital and points them at blue. This game is ending, ladies and gentlemen. Couldn't you have worn the same shirt? Yeah, that would be trippy. <laughs> okay, so now Magenta looks like they are absolutely going to be giving themselves fourth. And blue says, oh, damn it. Oh damn it! I'm gonna steal your capital. Surely nothing bad will happen if I. Oh, break an orange. Oh, what is blue doing? Blue's opening orange to uh, hopefully have orange involve themselves in this board. It's interesting that blue's garbage capital hasn't really punished them enough yet. If I'm blue, I start putting a bunch of troops on my capital. I definitely don't leave them in the middle of Great Britain. <laughs> what the fuck was that plan? Jocko Fisher. Pete, have you in these 60s games found yourself in blue or magenta's position? If so, how do you handle that? Um, well, I mean, I'd be in a better spot than blue because I wouldn't have capped in Portugal. Um, yeah, now I just build out my guard. Yeah, I just build out my guard. This looks like Magenta's going to sue into blue, so uh, it just gives me the game. In this exact situation, 
Um, if I'm blue and I'm about to get sued into by magenta, yeah, I would have put more troops on my capital. But I wouldn't be, I would never be in magenta situation because I would never sue out like this. I'm always going to be playing these games, even to come back from a desperate loss. Um, that's the whole point of playing them. So uh, in blue's position, this has happened to me for sure. Um, and I'm sure when it happened to me, I absolutely deserved it. Um, but I would never be the player in Magenta's position because what they're doing is just throwing the game now. They've given up. They've stopped playing to win. Um, and they're just deleting them, their own troops. Maybe they're trying to get a higher placement, but I don't do that. I try to, I try to build balance into my decision making here. You're never going to see me sue out like that. The killed the video I watched this morning was him capping in Portugal, ironically. Did he win? I bet you he won. Okay, Magenta puts 134 troops in Rabat. Thank you, Mihawk, with the sub. Cheers, man. Thank you so much. Orange is open. Orange can choose to involve themselves in this game. This game is ending now, right? We see how much of my advantage is. I have almost 200 troops on uh, blue and far more than that on the other two. I could just eat the other two guys and go into a 1v1 with blue at this point, but I'm playing to win without a fair 1v1. I'm playing to just crush. But Jen is probably pissed at blue for not attacking me and punishing them. Exactly. Yeah. Can you play a game where you try to win from a trash cap? Oh, the, don't you worry. <laughs> There's a lot of these games. So I, pl I play to win from every position you can imagine. Yeah, Blue can try and reconstitute a bit. But he doesn't open the magenta stack. Magenta is now inside of the blue position, so it's just a matter of time before they both kind of delete each other. Now, unfortunately, it looks more like Orange is the one who gets second, which is just unconscionable to me. I would never, in any sort of fair game, allow a player who's done fuck all but break me and, like, poorly opportunistically break me from time to time and just other than that cap stack in Iceland get higher than the lowest possible placement. So if I had anything to do about it, I would make sure orange got the lowest possible placement. Uh, sacking. Hello. Hey, Pete been sent on YouTube since 700. Uh, first seeing you on Twitch. Congrats on 100 K. Well earned. Thanks, man. It doesn't even feel earned. It just feels, just feels like I'm blessed, man. I just feel really lucky. Thanks. What are the best cap spots on Europe Advance? On these settings, I like the East. So it really depends on if you're later in the turn order, you want to cap on a two or a three. Um, you really shouldn't be capping on a one if you're in fifth or sixth seat. Um, but I really like to be in the East. Southeast Europe is okay. Uh, something in the plus eight is okay. Russia is okay. Orient is okay. The, I don't usually want to cap in here, but maybe I'll do it like I'll do it Egypt or... Benghazi if I'm trying to guard Orient. If I followed Pete's videos correctly, Arabia is the best part. Dude, Arabia is so bad. <laughs> Pete and Pete, the adventures of Pete and Pete back on the air. Is Pete playing against Pete? Yes. Pete wins. Really not sure what Magenta's trying to do now. Just kind of dirtling about. And of course, Orange hits a 13 stack. Oh, great. And we surely don't see them hit a 65. So, yep. They take the lane of least resistance and move south. What a scumbag, scumbag play style for Orange. Oh, he assists on the blue kill. What a scumbag, scumbag play style for Orange. He takes fucking, the next big move he does is just to delete some fucking blue troops. Blue's probably steaming, right? The entire table is giving me first. Yep, and blue gonna go smack Arena time into magenta. Orange is not happy because Blue tried to car block them. So did I. <laughs> I tried to car block them too. 
Why are there two caps in Iceland? I think uh, the white player in this game capped in Iceland first, and I think they capped as a bot. So at least that part can be understood. And, and Blue's pissed now at Magenta. So they're Blue's trying to um, smack Magenta so that they can guarantee a higher placement, I guess, or maybe just out of revenge. But again, they don't understand that they're playing caps, so they have no troops on their capital, and they don't free up their stack. Okay, now I lock the Orange 60 in so Orange can't involve himself in the game again. I'm just like, stop playing, Orange. <laughs> Stay in your, right? Stay in your hole. You can't roll a 60 cap into a 115. It's not going to go anywhere. It's just going to delete itself, which this is me throwing my weight around. Yes, the Pete on the left is very quiet. Yes. Almost like there were technical difficulties. The the hilarious peanut gallery of Twitch, folks. I saw you talk about it, but didn't really understand what Black did when he left and came back by explaining. Sure. So uh, on like the third or fourth turn, I haymakered Black. I took their capital and broke their plus four. So it was a one, two, three, four, five, six point play for them. They lost. Six additional troops. They were so stunned by this that they fucking closed the app in anger. So Black did not reciprocate me, didn't even try and break my plus four on the subsequent turn. And then I guess they got the wherewithal to be pissed, but also was like, ah, fuck this guy. So they came back, saw the board position, and decided to take Scandinavia with the hope that they would be allowed to exist, grow, rebuild, and then maybe get a cap back. Revenge, Pete, whatever. As soon as they came back, I made sure to obliterate them as quickly as possible. Every turn, I spent all of my energy uh, removing them from positions and killing them to the point where they had no real impact to the game and couldn't rebuild. Um, and it's important when you <clears throat> go bad to someone that you prevent them from rebuilding. Uh, uh, an enemy in risk is... Best defeated at once. That is a, uh, that's a Petism you can take to the bank. An enemy in risk is best defeated all at once. <laughs> when you go bad, you go really bad. Exactly. If you're going to hit me, you should probably kill me. Martin says, how did my round one go? I got sniped. I got sniped in a tournament game. So it's a it's a real shame that I that I don't get to play this season. It's a real crying shame. Okay, so we're we're now in a massive massive uh, loss for everyone else. I get to decide who wins this game. Um, so now I'm just taking board. Nope. How could he get removed from the tournament? How could you prove it? Sniping is legal. <laughs> there's no way to there's no way to police it, right? No, of course not. There's no way to police it. There would be no way to prove it. It is a legal thing you can do. No, no, not stream sniping, sniping, just specifically sniping. This guy, this guy joined the tournament. He played a couple of turns and he made sure that me and him lost and then he quit the server. Clean, well-executed snipe. I lose. Okay, guess I don't get a fair game, right? And that's just the cross I bear, right? That is the, um, that is the triumph and the tragedy of being the guy sitting in this seat. I would love a fair game. I don't need any fucking advantages, right? I just want a chance. I want a fair chance. At some point with free for all, that doesn't actually become possible. Can he just do the cap and lose all his troops? Is this the end for blue? No. I feel honored by that? No. No, I feel like I've destroyed the thing I loved. 
It's super sad, yeah. I agree. It's very sad. But you can't... Any way you would try to address it would create fairness issues in the other way, right? You can't design a tournament to benefit any person. You certainly can't design a tournament to benefit someone like me, who's an extreme outlier. That would be unfair in a whole different kind of way, right? <laughs> Did Pete destroy chat? Why? What happened? Yeah, blue, I don't think blue is good enough to realize how important the caps are, Victor. Play under a pseudonym? That's illegal. You can't play anonymously. I would play all anonymously if that was fair, right? If everyone was anonymous, then it would be fair, and I would play that 100%. But having an unequal anonymity is also unfair, and we can't have that. Uh... I was asking chat what you meant. You destroyed the thing you love. Oh, I love competitive risk, Kite Sun. Right? I love fair competition. Um, I love a fair fight. I love a real fight. So I don't really get that. I, I killed that for me. So I'm going to have to play in like open tournaments. Or uh, not open. I can't play in open tournaments as much anymore. I can't expect a, a fair game in an open tournament because of the notoriety. I have to play in qualifiers or something. So it now looks like Magenta gets fourth, Orange gets second, and Blue gets third, which is a real bummer. Alts are not allowed, and for good reason, yes. Yeah, Bahio. It's... It's illegal for a good reason. I'm instrumental in the reason why it is illegal, right? I have been a, it, their alts used to be allowed in these tournaments. And I, I was one of the most passionate advocates to get that out because it was unfair. Um, all right. And we're not quite done yet. We're still giving blue a chance to kill magenta, which I feel is honorable. I want blue to get a higher placement. Blue is my homie all game. You see me not breaking him. This is my sort of attempt to be a homie here. Hell's Diplomat says, I feel like forcing anyone to play non would be better than everyone playing with the potential of being gone after. Oh, I would love it if everyone played anonymously. It'd be great. Th yeah, so the reason I'm not breaking blue on the bottom is not so that he doesn't retaliate. It's so that he gets extra troops to kill Magenta. I want Blue to get a higher placement. I'm trying to help out Blue. Might explain why alts aren't allowed. Sure. So there was a circumstance where a well-known player, I will not say who, um, but we all know who it was, um, played an entire season as an alt and then sniped Cosmic Cowboy in the final. So he threw and he made sure that Cosmic Cowboy didn't win. He played an entire season he eliminated me in the semis, right? He disrespected every single staff member on the server and every single competitor that played fairly by playing all the way to the finals and then essentially suiciding and ruining his own game and Cosmic Cowboys to make sure that Cosmic Cowboy didn't get a fair chance. And that, and we had already known that... Okay, so Blue, Blue quits here. So Blue actually, unfortunately, locks in fourth. Now, I obviously am not going to give Orange a higher placement. I would have given Blue second, but they locked in fourth on their own by surrendering, which is unfortunate. So now, obviously, you guys are going to see I do not respect Orange's play, and I will not be giving them a higher placement. You want to sit in Iceland all game and do nothing? Die. You get the lowest I can possibly give you, which is unfortunately third. <laughs> and there you have it. Ladies and gentlemen. It's Macarino time. Here we go. That's the end of the game. Let's see if I can show you guys 
any stats. Do, does it say how many skill points we go up? Okay, defeating one novice, three beginners, and intermediate. Nobody was good. The best player in this game was Black, who I haymakered right out of this game. Um, yeah. No, no real shocker that everyone else was kind of lousy, but I'm really happy about how that one went. 29,287. Um, and this is just the first quarter of the way through the season. So we got a ton of these games coming. I hope you like them. I hope I showed you, we're at rank 302 here, right? I, I hope I showed you um, what I like about them. Um, and yeah, there's, they're always very dynamic. There's, there's always a lot of play to them. And the most important thing is the way they show sort of the diplomatic skill in the game. So, um, Feel free to ask me anything, guys, in the YouTube comments um, if there's something you don't understand about the settings or or why I've made certain choices. But I really hope you now have a better sense of what I love about them and what to look for in the upcoming games in these series. Because um, I remember just at the end of these games, um, leaving, finish, finish, leaving, feeling very satisfied um, by the experience. So I really hope they're interesting to watch because they were very interesting to play thank you for watching folks hope you enjoyed hope you found some of this fun and entertaining if you are interested in getting better the game of risk i invite you to subscribe to my channels come along the ride with me a daily release on youtube I do weekday streams on twitch and for all of you on the path to world domination good games good luck